Well, we have two bad news. The freezer is not cooling for some days and now the toilet is leaking. I'm Roberta. And I'm Duke. And after two years bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life, it's finally time to start exploring. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Sunday for a new episode. If you didn't watch last week's episode, after visiting one of my dream boats being built, we said goodbye to my cousins and now we welcome on board our new crew member, Julian. Yeah, we're here! Finally! <laughs> So this is something that we've been waiting for a long time to have on the boat because from now on we have a lot of crossings and right now our boat's not as safe as should be because we have no life raft. Finally our life raft is here. <laughs> so the life raft just arrived. We need to open and see where we're gonna put this beast because it's really heavy and big. Oh yeah. I thought you were waiting a long time. Nice to time. meet you. That's Julian. <laughs> have me on board. <laughs> yeah, so, so Julian is a friend that when I used to study engineering, we went to a lecture once and we met him because he used to work with a friend of mine and we don't see him for uh, we, 10 years, we didn't see him. No. And now he's back to stay with us for like five days. That's right. Oh, he also lives in a boat in Australia. <laughs> So now we just need to find a way of tying it to place. We have this support that we can, you know, somehow tie. This is a La Lisa's for six persons. So this is an offshore for six person, ISO life raft. So here is how we do it. It must be tricky when we need, but somehow we're gonna do if we need, but we won't need. It's gonna be perfect. We're never gonna use. That's just gonna sit here, right? Just sit here and never use. Hopefully you never have to launch a life raft. Hopefully. Well, we have Two bad news, the freezer is not cooling for some days and now the toilet is leaking. Mm, the toilet start to give us trouble. And this one that was the good one, and the weird thing is not, it's not leaking actually, it's just uh, the water is flowing back. So we, we arrived here and there was water on the top of the toilet. So I think maybe the anti-siphon is not working because it's a, an electrical one that it's a solenoid that works only when you know when I press here it closes the valve and then when I unpress it opens the valve and maybe it's not opening and closing the valve I'm not sure. We need to check that. So we need to take this out. So I believe the problem is the solenoid because the solenoid is supposed to allow air in this little hose when the toilet's not being used and whenever you use the toilet the energy through these wires will block the solenoid so right now there is air coming in I'm gonna connect to the batteries and see what happens if it blocks there just to test if the solenoid is the problem so I have the negative wire already on the bus bar I'm gonna put the positive directly to the battery. Let's hope I don't explode anything. Oops. Supposedly it's working. What's Not the problem sure. then? <laughs> it doesn't make sense because the problem is that the toilet's filling with water when we stop flushing. And if it, we're stopping flushing and the water keeps coming, that means that there is a siphon on the inlet of water. And this is what breaks the siphon. So. If this is breaking the siphon, I'm not sure. Siphon. Siphon. So we're gonna try to assemble back it together and replace this joker valve. We have another two joker valves here. Time for the truth. Mm -hmm. Maybe this uh, the solenoid was not attached properly. I think all good. But from now on, when we leave the boat, we need to shut off the valves yeah. every single time just to guarantee we don't sink the boat. Because I think we can close the inlet every single time we use it. Yeah, uh, because the one of the big problems of sinking boats is actually toilets. Because if the siphon doesn't work, that means the water keeps coming and coming and won't stop. So, all good for now. You, finally. Yay! <laughs> you! <laughs> it's 
it's time to troubleshoot the freezer now. So, what's yeah. the idea? Yeah, I found a video online that shows a few troubleshoot tests on the CPU of the freezer. So I believe the problem is the fan and it says that if the problem is the fan, you just disconnect the fan here on the back of the freezer on the CPU. And if the fan is the problem, when I do that, it's gonna bypass the fan and the compressor is gonna start, hopefully. Yeah, now it's, can you start? Because we can tell that the fan is not working. So now we are gonna turn it off. See? So the problem is the fan. So what's next? So I'm gonna collect the fan back. Let's see what happened. So this fan is not working. I think we should leave it on for a while now because the compressor seems like it's working harder now. I think it's gonna work. And if not, the problem is the fan. We need to replace the fan. It's a win. It's something. I mean, it's a little bit of a progress. <laughs> I Eventually. hope we can have this freezer working when we do like 20 days crossing so we can have food. Yeah, some people say that boat means bring another thousand. I, I hate that. I don't like when people say that because I think boat brings you a lot of happiness. Also, when people just, you know, focus on the money wise. But I think maybe we should come up with a f sentence that say that boat is just bring another problem because there's <laughs> always a new problem. And <laughs> it's to keep you alive, you know, you always oh, do something, you always have something to worry about. <laughs> can I worry about go s going surfing? No, you can worry I about can. editing a video. <laughs> See you guys later. So just to make sure that the problem is the fan, I'm watching this video. So basically you need to connect a LED light to the CPU and it shows the problem by blinking the LED light. So if it blinks one time in four seconds, it's one problem. If it blinks twice in four seconds, it's a different problem. So I'm looking for two blinks of the light in four seconds and that's gonna confirm that the problem is the fan and we need to replace the fan. If it blinks one time, that's the compressor. If bring blinks three times I'm not sure it's a bigger <laughs> problem that we, we cannot fix so I hope it doesn't blink three times <laughs> yeah if, if it blinks three times you're in trouble basically but we're gonna hope that's just two times and then it's gonna be something easier to fix that I hope I can buy a fan and replace let's see positive let's see negative First attempt didn't work, going for the second attempt. We're now gonna test see if the LED light works directly from the 12 volt source. Oh. It does work. Something is wrong, the di di diagnostics is not working. Yeah, supposedly the D is to diagnose the problem of the freezer, but it's not, I don't know. I don't know, I really don't know what to do now. We'll find a solution eventually. Yeah, eventually, one day, in a year from now. <laughs> Well, at this point we thought we solved at least one of the problems, but in reality we didn't solve neither of them. But let's talk about that later because as we just have one day before we set sail again, we decided to take advantage of this beautiful yacht club, so we went to the swimming pool, then we got some more fresh water, we did some provisioning, and we also filled up the diesel tank. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah. Do you think he knows how to have style? It's pink shorts. And stri stri that's the style, you know? Yeah, today we are putting nice clothes because it's the tourist day. We're gonna go out to explore the city because tomorrow we're leaving already. Yay. So, what? Yay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it, before we leave, we need to check some a few spots on the city. And the first place we're gonna go, it's an awesome place. It's a museum from the guy that was the first Brazilian to circumnavigate solo the world. And that's really cool. And that's where we're gonna go right now. Before we go, I want to welcome Carl to our Patreon family and also Amaze, thanks for the PayPal donation. Export is Let's see what Salvador is all about. So this is the Ocean Museum, that's the museum from the guy that I think 35 years or 40 years ago we will find out, did the first circumnavigation solo as Brazilian. So we're gonna see the boat, the boat's inside actually. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Ocean Museum, let's check it out. 
Are you lying there? Are you telling the truth? <laughs> 39? She lied to me. I didn't know she was 39. We do have something in common. We have in common the wing vein is exactly the same wing vein we have. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It's in English. so cool that you look to the boat and it seems like you're back in time. Basically the guy that did the circumnavigation on this boat, he nowadays has a 65 foot steel catch that he calls it a school boat that he takes his students from universities to sail around the world. Right now he's in Greenland, right? Oh, that's, that's his new boat. That's like a tank. That's him. A fun fact, this is Alicia Beloved, the owner of this boat. And this guy is a boat builder that worked for him for 25 years and that we actually had lunch yesterday. We didn't film that, but we had, we had lunch with this guy because this is the responsible for the boat building of our friend, the aluminum boat we just visited this week. He's the guy building. And this guy is a really famous guy called Olegi Belli, that is a guy that used to sail and do charters in Antarctica for a long time. And our furling system for our boat he bought for the former owner of our boat 15 years ago and he never stopped he, when we bought the boat he gave us the box with the furling system that he bought the, the first time the former owner of our boat went to Antarctica was we, like that on his boat this is the map of his trips you just press the trip but his six trips so you press the first trip and just keep like you know, showing the way So I read that with this boat he did three circumnavigations and with the new one that he's using right now he did two already. Ah, this is the new one. That's a thing. That's a lot. actually one of the best museums we have been so far in Brazil. It was inaugurated last year, so everything is really well taken care. So you can sit here and watch the documentary. <laughs> movie time, it's been a long time I don't... I want to go to a movie theater and Roberta never wants to go. <laughs> now she needs to go. Oh, we're the movie in the best place. Ooh. 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7. <laughs> What do you think? It's a nice museum or...? It's a really, really awesome museum. It's like the kind of museum that makes you dream. Like, make you like, you know, if you want to build a boat, you look at this and just like, I want to build a big boat. What did you say before about, we never thought about doing a circumnavigation, but, but after today... Yeah, after today I'm excited about it. Now I want to get my boat and just set sail and yeah. go around the world. It's exciting, it's very inspiring to be here and look at boats and how people did things in the past, it's so cool. And I mean like just, I don't know, uh, who likes boats and you see that and you <laughs> imagine that, that it's a real boat that big and that travel like twice around the globe and it's just, it's just too much. Like, we need to, you know, slow down and not get emotion, otherwise you're just, you know, Good news, we're going sailing tomorrow. Yay. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beginning of maybe one day a circumnavigation, who knows? It's just one step one forward. Step at time. <laughs>
yeah, no, yeah. it's just so awesome. It's like really good to, you know, see things that makes you dream. Yeah. But now we need to eat something. We're gonna walk to a place called Pelourinho. That's basically, if you're from Portugal, it's basically like a bairro out in Portugal, in Lisbon. It's like a different kind of neighborhood you're gonna see when you get there. I'm just gonna walk one kilometer and be right there. <laughs> This is the most iconic neighborhood of Salvador, that's really cool. Tourists! <laughs> Playing tourists today? Yeah, today is the tourist day, you are allowed to. Yay, let's have fun while we're at it. The, the Uber driver, yes, they said. You guys that are foreigners, I can say that about the government. We're not like, foreigners. We're foreigners? What's yeah. happening? Seems like in Bahia we are foreigners. We're just from so far away south that they think we're foreigners. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Found our typical food, acarajé, time to eat. First time eating a carajé. Looks delicious. Não sou muito acostumado em sobreviver. So good. Like it? Yeah, a lot. We've been planning on Roberta trying a carajé for months now. <laughs> good. I made it. That's so good. good I should. I have eaten before. <laughs> I told her you should try. It's really good. Here is the lift that goes to the high town to the low town. Yeah, we are right now in the high town. Down there is the low town. There is an elevator inside and we can go to the low town because we're gonna go have lunch on this place. Very expensive. Disappointing. I probably want to see the view on the elevator and there's no view. Well, after hours exploring the city, it's time for some local food at the public market. See you guys next week when we set sail to this beautiful place called Barra de São Miguel.